welcome back to another video! Today we're going to be doing a watercolour piece and with this watercolour piece I wanted to talk about uh, the philosophy or the practicality or the is it worth itness of expensive art materials and before I start with that I want to give a bit of context of my relationship with watercolours. So for a really long time I was very much against any sort of painting like traditional painting whatsoever. I switched from doing like traditional art in terms of inking and, and uh, just graphite pencils uh, to digital artwork when I was around 13 or 14 and then from like 14 to 8 18, 19 I did not look back I like I, I took art classes in school and they would try to get me to use acrylics and watercolors and pastels and, and, and all these other traditional mediums and I was just not having it if it wasn't just graphite or inking pens I could not jive with it and I managed to sort of uh, recognize that it was mainly because I was very clumsy with the brush uh, I'm not the most sort of hand-eye coordinated with things like arts and crafts and you know you might think like Candy what you mean you're like an art artist like you draw all the time and I was like yeah well that was a very long journey to, to get there. My handwriting is atrocious, my ability to cut with scissors is horrid, I can't wrap a gift to save my life, any of my friends can attest to that. So all those sorts of things don't come naturally to me and while I was able to train myself to you know get decent at you know drawing, especially drawing faces and characters and, and set styles, uh, I never quite really uh, overcame 100% my uh, hand-eye coordination uh, deficits. So if you add on top of not being really good at it, you add the like whiffy waffy tight pressure sensitivity of brushes, uh, that's when we get into trouble for me. But either way, uh, I did end up getting more into uh, traditional paintings, starting with watercolor and acrylic uh, after I was 18, 19, that kind of time in my life. I was more willing to try it out, more interested in what I could do, and I kind of logicked my way through it. And after then, I was able to like batter my way through and in my entire watercoloring career and I've it's not quite extensive I've done maybe like three or four dozen watercolor pieces in my entire life it's not like as extensive as my sketchbook filling or my um, digital repertoire but uh, it's decent enough and it's decent enough for me to like develop so certain like likes and dislikes and my biggest dislike in all of watercoloring history is how the paper buckles and what paper buckling means is when it, after it gets wet it creates all these wrinkles and these little dips and these little like high points and stuff like that and I wouldn't mind it so much if it weren't for the fact that water is very much affected by gravity and these uh, little rivets and wrinkles in the page uh, greatly affect sort of which areas of your piece turn darker and turn lighter and they're harder or easier to blend some areas uh, take longer to dry some take less and it's just it's a really kind of intangible uh, and difficult to control aspect of painting with watercolors and for me it's always been a frustration so in comes all the experimentation with all of the different like papers and mediums and, and things of that nature that I can find so my mo mo most standard I would say watercolor paper is the Canson XL uh, watercolor paper and that one's fine <laughs> I, I can't really say like it's my base that's everything that I compare things to um, but yeah it's 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 fine I guess I can make stuff with it but you know whatever and I've tried a couple other like a Strathmore one uh, this one brand from uh, Japan that I got this other brand from this other place that there's, there's another thing like I don't know the the names because I, I never really liked one enough to sort of remember it the Canton one is just because it's, it's always in my face and the Strathmore ones because Strathmore is a very known brand for other sketch pads type situation but the other brands like yeah I, I can't I don't remember maybe I'll uh, I'll be kind and I'll put photos of the ones that I mean on the screen but either way uh, in my delve into what color YouTube there's this one paper that keeps coming up and up and up and up and all of the, you know, artists that specialize in, in what color, they use this one and I always look at what they're doing and how they're doing it and I was like, wow, if only I could do that like that, if only my paper would behave like that and it's, it's an ongoing sort of uh, exercise in awe and every single time I come across a video that uses this paper, I look up this paper and every time I look up this paper, I cry because a pad of it is like 60 to 80 dollars and it's like 
Is it really worth that much? Is it as life changing as I think it's gonna be? But either way, I don't actually watercolor that often. Is it really worth this much money for like 60 sheets? Not even 60, usually it's like 30 or 40 sheets of paper. So it's like a lot of money for something that I'm not even 100% sure I like. But anyway, this was just something that was going on in the back of my mind for forever. And every time I'd go to an art store, I'd, I'd keep an eye on it. By the way, the, the brand is Archers, if you hadn't guessed that already from the title and from even just knowing uh, watercolor papers. But yeah, Archers watercolor paper, the 300 DSM, 100% uh, cotton. Uh, there's cold press and there's hot press, whatever. So I always kind of kept an eye out and there's two art stores in my city. There's a Desairs and then there's one that's just a, a local name, one downtown, um, that they carry it. And again, it's e on Amazon or at my local stores, equally as expensive, around 60 to $80 for the pad. And I was just like, yep, yeah, nope, not worth it. But these stores also sell these big old sheets of uncut watercolor paper and the local store that's downtown actually had these and it was it's a very sort of big sheet of paper uh, i didn't quite measure it before i cut it but it's i don't know i'd say like four feet by two and a half feet four feet by five by three feet or something like that it's quite large um and it was eleven dollars after tax to have such a big old sheet and i was like all right i'll take it uh, my life is about to change. I'm about to become a 100% watercolor artist. I will never draw anything other than watercolor after I experience the glories of this paper. And spoiler alert, that was not what happened. <laughs> so uh, it was a big old sheet of paper. It was $11. I cut, I cut, in, I cut it in half before I went home uh, with their sort of, uh, what do you call it? The guillotine. Um, and then that, that was as much as they could cut it for me. So I came with two halves of like all Archer World Cut paper. And then I, that same day, took one half of that and I cut six little squares of the size that you see here. I think it was something like 5.5 .5 by six inches, something like that. And then they're quite a nice size. Um, I'm quite happy with the size that I was able to cut it in. And if you think about it, I only cut the six of them, but I would have 12 of them if I cut the other half. So 12 sheets uh, of this paper at this size for $11. Like, you know what? I can, I can vibe with that. I can vibe with that. And especially because you only buy it like 12 sheets at a time and not like this $60 set. It's like $11 and some labor. And like I said, I'm very, very bad at cutting things in a straight line. And I tried really, really hard. And even then not all the sheets are even and some of them are quite bad. But you know what? You live and you learn. And I'd rather, you know, have tried to cut it and to make it more manageable than to like, you know, be scared to use it. So either way, this is a watercolor painting of my character Chrome. I use the Kuriotake Gansai watercolor set from Japan. And the paper is the Archer's 300 GSM cold press watercolor paper. Was this as life changing as I thought? No. Was it still cool? Yes, it was. Did it buckle? Yes. Did it buckle as much as my Kansen or my Strathmore or my whatever other brand was? No, it did not. But the, the, there's the like give and take there. It didn't buckle as much, but the little ripples that it did get were a lot more pronounced. So I didn't necessarily feel the effects, but I feel like even with the shadows and the way that it's filmed, you can slightly tell that there's a bit of a wave to it. So overall, this was not a life-changing sort of purchase. I have not turned into a 100% watercolor artist, but I did think it was kind of interesting. And so from there, and that's already most of the video we've done, but from there, I did want to kind of start this discussion about um, expensive art supplies and whether they're worth it and what is your philosophy in terms of getting uh, fancy art supplies or what have you. So I'm primarily a digital artist. Uh, I know that I've been doing a lot of sketchbook work lately and again, this watercolor piece and over the holidays, I did a lot of acrylic paints, but I do consider myself primarily a digital artist. And for digital art, it's kind of like a one-time purchase and it's a fairly expensive one-time purchase depending on what you're doing. Like my um, Wacom Intuos was quite expensive. Uh, a key or nowadays a subscription to Photoshop is quite expensive. If you're doing the iPad route, even if you already have an iPad, for whatever reason the pencil itself is quite expensive the apps not so much but either way digital art is kind of like a big upfront one-time purchase and then that's it you're done and then you can always do more things like buy accessories buy brush packs buy textures all that kind of stuff but essentially it can be a one-time purchase but with traditional art it's an ongoing sort of situation i kind of always say that you know using art supplies and collecting art supplies are two completely separate yet connected hobbies 
But yeah, what are your thoughts? Do you think this watercolor paper at the price it's at is worth it? Do you consider yourself uh, an artist or an art supply collector maybe or both? And what is kind of your philosophy in terms of uh, when the expensive art supply is worth it and when it might not be worth it? So like this paper, considering that it wasn't as game changing as I was hoping it was going to be, would you consider that worth it despite the, the cost of it? or not let me know i'm very interested in your thoughts but that's about it for this week's video um again i'm very excited to hear your thoughts and leave a like comment and i'll see you sometime